What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on The Great Debaters, and I'm joined by Amir Rahimi, Rapman Snack. Yes, yes, y'all. And today, our great debate is Is Dr. Dre's Compton a great album? And that's what we're here to discuss, man, because I think a lot of people didn't give this album its just due or even enough time to pay attention to it. So Amir, what are your initial thoughts on Compton the Soundtrack by Dr. Dre? When I first heard the news, I was very excited. I saw, I saw he was inspired by Shreya Compton, so I was like, okay, are there going to be scene quotes in here? Well, what's going to be? Right. None of that's really present. Um, wow. So my first listen, I was not surprised at how great it was. Right. And uh, let's hear your first take on it. I was very taken aback and it was something that I learned back in the day with OC because OC's first album Word Life came out and lyrically and sonically it had a very DITC vibe and aesthetic whereas when the second album Jules came out uh, a few years later it was very different sonically and even thematically and initially I didn't like it and what I realized is that I went into Jules thinking to get a sequel of sorts to Word Life. Okay. And it wasn't. But that didn't make Jules bad. It was just totally different and it sounded nothing like a Digging in the Crates album. So what I had to understand or what that OC experience taught me is that I had to judge the music for what it is, not what I thought it was gonna be. Because mm -hmm. that's not fair to the artist, it's not fair to me as a fan. And so that Jules by OC really taught me that lesson. So when I heard Compton soundtrack by Dr. Dre, I was expecting it to be quote unquote, I guess, harder throughout the whole record or to be something similar to what Dre had done throughout the overwhelming majority of his career as an artist, mm -hmm. as a rapper, and obviously as a producer but more so focusing on the rap thing. And that's not, I don't think, what we get on Compton, the soundtrack by Dr. Dre. I think we get a lot more of him, you know, kind of rapping faster, tongue twisty style, that type of stuff that we hadn't seen very much on, obviously, is, you know, the, the Chronic or on 2001 or with Ruthless or with most of his guest appearances throughout the years. So for you, what were your early impressions first couple of things? When I first heard it, uh, I was in track to talk about it. I didn't even think he rapped on the song because his voice is so different. Yeah. Until I heard him say, I still have the Eminem check sign open yet. I was like, okay, this is Dre. And then I immediately hit rewind. I was like, that didn't even sound like him. Right. So he kind of took like a younger, I guess, voice. Uh, it sounds like he tried to have a younger voice. He also sounded a lot more mature on some songs like talking to my diary it's all on me all in the day's work whereas on like the chronic we had one moment of of, of that like with little ghetto boy 2001 we had the message oh we had the david brothers to go to had a little bit of that too no oh. so i mean i think just that i saw some more maturity but i also saw that he took on I guess the current production around at that mm -hmm. time, you know, what was that 2015? And I think he just dreified it. He just made it so excellent. When we heard the intro, it kind of sounded like a movie intro. Oh, yeah. The way the way he started the whole thing up, which coincidentally it was inspired by Straight Out Compton. And then it goes straight to talk about it, an amazing song. And the song just as Dre does, they sound like they're supposed to flow like a movie, mm -hmm. like a cassette, just played in one sitting. And that's when I first heard that, I was like, oh, Dre's here. Yeah. This is Dre. Yeah, and I think that that's uh, flowing like a movie and things. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's been doing that, uh, in my opinion, at the highest level since his work in Ruthless, at Ruthless. But what I also think is different is that this album, you know, he did rely, like on 2001, on some of the familiar voices that we had, the Snoops and the Ice Cubes coming in, but then obviously for a lot of people, this was their introduction to Anderson Park in particular. So I think he got back to that of introducing, quote unquote, yeah. a new artist. But I, and Kendrick, of course, uh, shines on several of the songs. But 
I do think too, like a song with Loose Cans with Exhibit and Big Hutch is like phenomenal and has, you know, the beat change. The <laughs> That's my favorite song now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's well, amazing. for good reason. It's amazing. Yeah. But I, I think too, like even Snoop changes up his flow and Ice Cube the yeah. same thing. Like they really show that they're able to adapt and, you know, bring their brilliance in a way that, you know, a lot of people look at, you know, Dre, Snoop, Ice Cube as kind of being one trick ponies, but they're far from it. You know, they're like, those three guys are like chameleons. They've been able to evolve, adapt, and show that they can pretty much do anything. I agree. And, and Loose Cannon's funny that you mentioned. I feel like that's a movie on its own, that track. Oh, yeah. That where they're digging up the body at the end of the at the end of the song after what was it Sly Piper killed her I, I forget but man <laughs> dude that that song is amazing yeah. and um, that you mentioned I think it's so funny because he has he helped build these artists that are on this album you know Snoop Ice Cube Eminem Kendrick and we have a new person you know as you mentioned Anderson Pack so when I first saw the track list. I was just like this. I was like, no, we have new Dre album, and this guy's on almost half the album. He better deliver. And when I first heard him, the singing, mm -hmm. uh, we heard on Animals, especially with yeah. the DJ Premiere. That's like a, a hip hop dream to see Premiere and right. Dre on an album track. Uh, to see that and Anderson Pack shine on. What did you think of Anderson Pack and, and his? I was very impressed. Uh, I was familiar with him before, um, of course. But the thing is, is that. You know, what I think he brought to the table is that people, again, were so familiar with the Nate Dogg or to a lesser degree the Butch Cassidy or even the Jewel or Michelle A with Dre, that Anderson Pac is coming from a, a whole different lane and mentality. Yeah. Um, and I think that he is more, you know, those artists that I just mentioned, I think are more a traditional soul R&B type of flavor, whereas I think Anderson Pac is much more of a modern era of, I don't know, Neo Soul is not the right terminology, but he has much more of a kind of this amorphous sound that blends into well what's going on in the 2010 on era, yeah. as opposed to the other dudes and women were much more into a specific sound and style of like a big, super powerful voice. And back to your point about voices, I think Dre, one of the reasons I liked him so much, even from the World Class Record Crew days, is like his voice is so powerful and so husky that it's like real in your face and powerful. But I think with this album, uh, as you had mentioned, his voice changed so much yeah. that it wasn't uh it doesn't hit you in the same way and it's just different and like no, i think you're right i think that people need to understand that if you're gonna want someone to be an artist you gotta let them evolve and then you gotta evolve evaluate it for what it is and i think compton just showcases time and time again that you know dre's genius kind of knows no bounds it really does <laughs> he's amazing one of my favorite songs on there that we haven't talked about is the One Shot, One Kill with John Connor and Snoop. Mm -hmm. And with that one, uh, just that that kind of hyperactive, like, driving beat, but at the same time, it's not a dark, menacing beat mm -hmm. that we were so know and love from Dre, but it has the same type of force that we saw, especially during the Ruthless era from Dre, kind of that propulsiveness and that thing in there. You know? But, then you have, you know, you add Snoop and John Connor to the track, and you have kind of the original or older Dre protege versus like the newer yeah. aftermath collaboration. And I thought it not only bridged the gap well, but it just showed again kind of Dre's ability to kind of coach and kind of be the team captain of all of this stuff that's going on, all these different eras and sounds, and like in this instance, states with Michigan and California collaborating is just ridiculous. I agree, and and if you wanted that like a hard freaking beat, then genocide. That yeah. beat makes you want to commit murder. <laughs> Honestly, not me, but yeah. <laughs> but, but but one of the things where I think when we were talking about why this album also is not really talked about as being great, or a lot of people overlook it. I feel like. Um, 
there is no music video, correct? Yes. And there is no real, was there a single drop? If there no, was, I didn't know. Put it out, put it out. And I think that a song, and that's another thing too, you had your clear singles on The Chronic in 2001. You had like the next episode, you had Forgot About Dre, or you had nothing but a G thing, Let Me Ride, etc. But on here, if I were to choose a single, I don't know where I would go. I would probably only go with Just Another Day with the game. Okay. Because... That's just such a hard beat. And I can picture that being played at like a Lakers game. Really? You know? I can totally picture that at a Lakers game. I think just from the commercial aspect of it, One Shot, One Kill wouldn't be a good one, but since that's probably my favorite song on the album, mm -hmm. that's the one I would go with. Uh, I think just the song title would be problematic to most people, I would imagine. Yeah. But, you know, you can edit that up. They do that all the time. But I also love the For the Love of Money song. Um, not only because it references Easy e and, you know, Bone, obviously, it used to be first with Yella back uh, on the uh, Nothing But A Come Up EP back in the day from Bone, but I like the fact that they flipped the beat, and then on top of that, they did what rap does so well, which is make something old new again. Yeah. And I thought that true. that was, probably would be my other song to use as a symbol because it has the nostalgic vibe, but then Dre brought it up to the, to the modern era in a way that he's been doing since the 80s. And one thing to, to, to also compliment Dre's genius is that on that song, For the Love of Money, on the original Creep Non Come Up EP by Bone, the song after it is called Mo Cheese, you know, Mo Money, right. where it's just a, an add-on to the beat. It's just the instrumental going out more. And if you listen to Dre's rendition of For the Love of Money, he does the same thing. Yeah. So only people who are listening to this in the 90s are really keen on their hip hop stuff. They know that he did that. But that probably went over a lot of people's heads. So after noticing that, I was like, okay. Yeah, I mean, but that's, so that's what it's all about here on The Great Debaters, man. We're bringing up uh, lesser known, unknown, and seldom discussed facts. So for the debate, there is no debate between Amir and myself on this one. The Compton album, the soundtrack by Dr. Dre, it's a great album, man. It's Amazing. A, it's no debate. And if for you guys, though, we know probably some of y'all got don't agree with that. So make sure to hit us up in the comment section. Let you let us know what you think and why, because Amir and I are going to be hitting y'all back and uh, looking forward to this discourse that we're about to embark on. I'm Soren Baker. Amir, any rapping and snack? Yeah, y'all. Thanks for watching this. The Great Debaters.